Okay. Last question. Okay. It has been said that Michael wasn't feeling well mm -hmm. the day, the last day of rehearsals. Okay. Well, I know that, you know, as long as I've worked with Michael, there was always, um, you know, bouts of insomnia. Always. You know, I can only go from my own experience. And I know that any time personally preparing for a show, especially one of his, it's very difficult to sleep. Um, not only because there's so many ideas in your head, but you're thinking about the time involved and, you know, the fact that the show is just around the corner or you're getting a phone call from Michael at three or four in the morning with a new idea and then that could take an hour, an hour and a half, you're talking, then you, you know, so the, your, your schedule sort of, your, your internal clock adjusts to the demands of the show. That's a rule. Always happened, never been a question, always been the way it is. Um, for This Is It, I think that there was even more of that because he was so excited. He was so excited to get to work every day. He was, you know, always present and always wanted to do it and always wanted everything to be amazing. He was involved with, you know, the, the color of the dancer's hair, the haircuts, the clothing, the sound, obviously, even the design of the ticket for the show. So everything he cared about and a lot of times, as he would explain to me, that the quietest time is in the middle of the night. The phone's not ringing, the children are asleep, you know, there's no manager. So it's also the that, time that he became the most creative. He, yes, and so he loved the nighttime. And so that was his own sort of personal special time. And so how others would perceive it as an inability to sleep, for him, it was more like he burned the midnight oil, and that was his sort of process, always. Um, but there was no indication to me that he wasn't in top shape. I mean, I knew that he was tired. I mean, he was 50 years old. He was, you know, returning to the stage after a 10 plus year absence, you know, but he was in shape. He was in wonderful, um, you know, emotional shape. I think that um, his children had a lot to do with that. He was so excited about being able to share with them what he was so passionate about for so many years. So I think that all of those things were fuel for him. and. Um, you know, so I was not worried. I mean, and as far as um, the chicken and all of that stuff, you know, all of us would make an agreement with each other that at this time we're going to stop and eat. At this time we're going to stop and take a break. You know, because it's very easy to get sort of caught up in the thing. And then you've got Andre Crouch and his singers coming in for a rehearsal. And then you've got this person coming in for wardrobe. And you've got Rushka coming in for fitting and Zaldi doing this. And, you know, and then he's working on his record, so there's a whole different team of people at the house, and, you know, so it was necessary to schedule breaks and nourishment. And, um, you know, quite lovingly, we would always sort of, you know, I would open up the boost and put the fruit, and Kenny would cut the chicken, and the whole time we're in a meeting, you know, talking about whatever it is, but we're still sort of encouraging and putting things so that he could just sort of reach and... You know, so you'll see, if not enough in the film, in the DVD for sure, that, you know, we're sitting in meetings and he's always sort of eating and we're talking to this person who's, you know, famous for doing whatever they're doing and he's just like eating grapes and bananas and eating, you know, so it was just his own experience, you know, as it should be. And, um, you know, and, and as far as his weight, I asked him, I go, you know, uh, you're smaller than the last time I saw you. He goes, yeah, this is my show weight. This is my new show weight, you know. And it was important to him that, like, all of those things he thought about, you know. Um, and I know even during the history tour and dangerous tour, there was a fluctuation, you know, in his weight. And, you know, so it was up to us to just make sure that at whatever weight he was or wanted to be, that he was going to be um, physically ready for the demands of the show, which is why they were spread out over a nine-month period, which is why he would have a beautiful home in the countryside so that he could recuperate, you know, after each show and just not be in the city in a hotel room, you know. It was With all thought hundreds out. hundreds of fans up front and still all, being able yeah, to sleep. Yeah, it was all thought out so that he could have the most comfortable experience possible. Okay, well, I hope that we were able to fulfill the fans, their needs, their questions. Good. I think we've gone Good. far beyond. Good. Thank well, you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. And there isn't much more I can say. Travis Payne, it speaks for itself. Yeah, heal the world. <laughs> <laughs>